Okay, good morning. Hope everybody is doing well on this Sunday. Looks like everything's showing up nicely. Good. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So this is Paint with Lovejoy. And this channel is geared towards first time and beginner painters. Uh, so what you have on the screen is we've got our colors for today and we are keeping a rather limited color palette. We're going to be working, um, aside from the background and the eye color, we're pretty monochromatic today using just the uh, white and the black. And we are painting a white Pyrenees puppy. So we can't just leave the white of the canvas. So we'll be using shades of light gray to kind of create this depth. And I am painting on an eight by 10 canvas panel. Some of you may be on stretched canvas where there's gonna be a little bit more width on the sides. And if you're on a stretched canvas, when our background meets the edge, carry that color right around the sides, the tops and the bottoms. That way it just looks nice when it hangs on the wall, having that color wrap around the edge. Now we do have our traceable on here or our composition already on here. So you've got two options for how to get this on your canvas. You can pause the video, draw what you see, um, and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Or there is a link in the description box below for what I call a traceable, and you'll down, uh, purchase it, download it, print it out, and then with carbon paper, you transfer it to the surface. And when you transfer with carbon paper, it's actually gonna look a little bit more like this line and this one, because carbon paper is gonna be a lot lighter than the black line I have on my canvas. And I outlined mine with a Sharpie marker, for those of you at home that are gonna pause the video and draw what you see. Um, so those of you that are gonna be using the carbon paper, you do not have to go over with the black Sharpie marker and the carbon paper, it's actually easier to cover with paint compared to the marker. So just some um, fine details before we get started. And oh my gosh, I see quite a few people jumping on. This is awesome. Sundays are definitely a great day. So hi, Denise. Hi, Miss Smith. Hi, Natasha, Tammy, Jan, Jackie, Victoria. All right. Awesome. And everybody else who is also watching but didn't leave a comment. Thank you guys so much. Um, I really do enjoy doing these demos. Okay, so let's jump into painting. We are going to go for kind of a light kind of spearminty green in the background. I wanted it to be kind of muted and then on the ground. Um, and then I'll probably not clean my brush in the water so that my water stays clean um, as we're working with our shades of gray. So if you want to switch out any colors, if you want to do a blue background, teal, uh, red, whatever you feel like doing, go right ahead. So if you've never painted before, when you're mixing colors, you always want to start out light. So I kind of pull some of that white aside and then whatever color you're mixing, start off with a small amount of pigment and mix it in. And then you can always add a little bit more. So if you're thinking maybe you like that color, but maybe a little darker, you can even just mix it on the side and then decide which color you want. I'm actually gonna go for a bit more of that spearminty, uh, kind of cooler green color. All right, so a few brush strokes to try. If you've never painted before, try using the full width of your brush. Try using uh, the skinny portion of the brush or the smaller portion. And then also try just literally slapping your brush on the canvas and making X marks. Um, it's important that when you're in your beginning stages of painting to try a bunch of different things. That's the only way you can figure out what you like and don't like. Um, and a lot of times in life and the creative process, uh, we tend to find more of the things we don't like. Um, so don't be afraid to just keep experimenting and trying more things. Even if you don't like it, it's just getting you closer to understanding and defining the things you do like. All right, and if you are using student grade paint, and that is what I'm using here on the, on the video, um, you may notice that your paint's kind of transparent. So you've got two options if your paint is in that category. You can apply everything, let it dry, and then apply a second or even third coat. Or, um, and here I'm gonna grab a little more paint, you can apply it a lot thicker, and it becomes a little bit more opaque. Um, so you've got two options depending on the tools or the supplies that you have on hand. And as I've been filling in this background, you have noticed that I've mixed my color multiple times. So if you've got a little variety in your background when you have to make more of your color, 
don't stress about getting the exact same shade. I will demonstrate a wet on wet blending method in a moment. Um, and that's a way you can kind of change and play with your background. So basically, um, don't get uh, too upset about anything that you paint. It's more about the process and enjoying and escaping the world. And I see, I actually just saw a bunch of stuff happen on the chat. Wow, I got a little zoned into this. So let me take a look. And oh my gosh, awesome. Victoria, thank you for the donation. Very cool. I actually forgot that you could do that on the chat. <laughs> awesome. Let's see if we have any questions. Nope, still good. Awesome amount of people coming in here. Cool. So again, thank you for the donation. Um, everything that you guys donate, even when you watch the YouTube videos, because it is monetized, so I get a little bit of money off of that. Everything goes to continuing to create videos uh, for Paint with Lovejoy and the Paint with Lovejoy website. Uh, so feel free to check those out. All right. Okay, so we've got our base background on here and you wanna do this while this is wet. This is called a wet on wet blending method. So I actually like to go a little bit lighter on the top and then we'll go a little bit darker, kind of so the dog's creating a shadow. So I'm gonna do the darker first and that dark green's almost a little more than I want. So I'm actually just gonna mix it on the edge so it tones it down a little bit, but it is still pretty dark. And then I'm gonna slap this kind of like right underneath the legs um, on our dog and then wipe off any excess paint and then we're going to go back and you've got two methods on blending the wet paint there's kind of a push and a smear and you're literally just it's almost exactly like what you did on the plate but you're just kind of mixing the two colors and they're creating a new gradient between the two of them or one that we've done in some of the other demos where we're going to do kind of what I call the stabbing method if you hold your brush kind of perpendicular or it's also um, could be considered stippling, and that would be more of the correct art term for it. So whichever one that you end up liking, sometimes it's nice just to do both and get a feel for it. Um, on a side note, the stippling like this will destroy the tips of the bristles on your brush a little bit quicker than being a little kinder to your brushes. I am prone to beat up my brushes, so just kind of know what you're getting into um, with some of the effects. So I actually want this to be a little bit darker, so I'm grabbing more of that direct green. And I'll probably do a bit more of the uh, uh, push and smear method. And then I'll be adding some white in the top, and then we'll be moving into our shades of light gray to create our white dog. All right, so for the lighter areas, same thing. You just kind of slap some of that white on there and you'll notice that as you move your brush, the lighter colors actually get eaten up in the base color a lot quicker than the darker colors. So the more that you paint, um, the more that will kind of become second nature and you'll know how to adjust kind of your pigment. But when you're first starting out painting, just play and observe and just kind of get comfortable with your tools. You will notice that as the things that you learn on your first couple of paintings, when you paint again after that, um, some of those concepts learnt will make more sense. So this painting's not about being perfect on the first go round, but it's about a continued process of learning more and more. So to not contaminate my water, I'm actually not gonna drop that in the water container, but if you're at home, um, maybe have two containers of water, so that way you can have one for your dark color and then one for as we're mixing our uh, shades of gray. Because we're using so much white, I don't want the green or the green tinted water to contaminate my shades of gray. Okay, so let's see, as I'm looking at the photo, we are gonna start with our darker shades and work towards our lighter ones. So I'm actually gonna use a small pointy brush for the first step because we're gonna do a little bit of eyeliner. We'll get the nose and a little bit on the mouth and then we'll move into our lighter shades. So for right now, we're actually gonna do a dark gray I'm gonna pull some of that white aside. Um, probably a two to one, two parts black to one part white. And this gets us to our dark gray. And I am using that pointy brush. So we're gonna go around and do a little bit more eyeliner. We're gonna get the nose in there and then it's gonna look like he's gonna have a little bit of a mustache, but we'll tone that down um, towards the end. So as we do these, 
Um, I'm basically creating just tiny little dots or little dash marks and giving this little puppy some nice smoky eyeliner. It's just going right around the edge. And I don't usually have you start with such tiny little brush strokes to begin with. We usually save this towards the end. So if you're finding that your brush is kind of shaky as you go to make these little dots, it means you're holding your breath. So if you exhale, as you touch the brush to the canvas, that'll make it a little bit easier for you. And we'll be moving into some bigger brush strokes after this. All right, so we've got the top of the nose with that dark gray. We're going to get a little bit underneath his mouth as well. And then we're going to add a little bit more white to this and we're going to do what we call perimeter mixing. So I've grabbed a bit more white and just kind of on the edge, but still kind of pulling some of that dark gray um, into the blob that I was putting on the edge. So now we have two shades. So we're going to use this little bit lighter gray for the front of the nose. And if you happen to go a little bit outside those lines, that's okay. No big deal. It's just paint. It's never the end of the world. And I'm going to go back up next to that eyeliner and just add a little bit so it's not such a harsh transition. And kind of where the tear ducts would be, just kind of adding a bit more of that light gray to that area. All right, and this is where it's going to look like he has a little bit of a mustache. So I'm basically just making little dash marks going down. These don't have to be perfect because like I said, we will kind of cover over that in our next couple of steps. So let's jump down one more color. So putting that blob of white next to the edge and again, just pulling some of that gray into the next color, going one, one or two shades a little bit lighter. Getting this little dog a mustache for a little bit. Little Charlie Chaplin stash. Okay, so that's kind of it for the darkest areas. Actually, we're gonna do one more, so we're gonna get a little bit of a dark area here. So I'm gonna clean that brush. I am gonna move up to the medium flat brush, and I'm gonna use this for kind of the remaining portion of um, the painting. And since this dog is so fluffy, I'm gonna be holding the brush sideways, kind of making these long, uh, longer little brush strokes, longer dash marks, and we'll be overlapping the brush strokes. Okay, so using this last gray that we had just made, this is gonna be our dark shadow in the white fur, and then we're gonna just keep going down from this color. So as you are watching at home, I want you to just kind of observe the placement that I put this color, and I've gotta make a bit more of it, so hold on. Um, but I want you to observe the placement of this color and the general shape that I make with it. And all you're doing at home is observing what you see and then applying it to your canvas and you are strengthening your power of observation. And this is a skill that art is really good um, at strengthening because you are observing what you see and the more observant you get in, with artwork, the more you'll see your observation skills kind of show up in your um, other activities in life. So the, strengthening your power of observation is a good life skill. Just trying to give you guys more reasons to uh, paint. If it helps other areas in your life, maybe you'll be more inclined to paint even more. All right, so again, you're just observing the general placement of where all these little puppy furs go. And I know it feels weird to put uh, gray on for a white dog, but you have to realize, and this is something I enjoy telling quite a few of my students in class, is that you guys are magicians as you paint. You are creating the illusion of a 3D object on a flat 2D surface. So to create that illusion, just like a magician, you have to um, kind of trick the eye a little bit. And by putting certain colors next to each other, it gives us the illusion that we have something 3D on literally a flat surface. Okay, oh, let's get a little bit for the shadow back here. All right, and now we're basically just gonna keep going down 
um, another step in our value scale. So I'm going to grab that big chunk of white, put it on the edge. And if you're getting to kind of like where I'm at, to where you're running out of room, you can always make a new pile um, on a fresh spot. So again, just kind of moving it down. This isn't quite pure white. It's a super light gray right now. And we're going to kind of hang out next to the areas we were just applying it. We will overlap some of those darker grays. And when you overlap them, just like when we did the wet on wet blending in the background, um, the two colors are going to mix together because the paint is still wet. And this gives us a bit of an opportunity to soften the transition between this darker gray, a little lighter gray, and then we'll be adding pure white next. All right. And again, if you have to mix this color a second or third time, don't stress about the exact same shade. Each time you mix a color, your brain is learning a lot. And if you mix your color and then apply it, you realize you need to adjust, uh, go ahead and adjust your paint to what you need. And I got way too much black in there for that one. There we go. So art's not about being perfect, but it's about the time frame that you're here creating. You're escaping the world a little bit. You're zoning out. You're switching gears in your brain and just kind of getting lost in the process of painting. All right, let's see. I've got to look over at chat every now and then. Nice. We've got a few more people joining. Hi, Photography Queen and Mystic Paws and Jen. Awesome. Yeah, this will... Um, definitely help with the, your, your cap for the Humane Society. So I think on yours, just a bit more shadow right here, and then I think a little bit more shadow on the chest of that cat um, will just kind of help intensify the depth of it. All right, so again, just kind of filling this light gray space in. Um, I forgot to note before we moved into this, you, um, when you're painting at home, let your background fully dry before you move into painting your dog. Um, especially since this is a white dog, we didn't want any of the background color to get into um, your shades of gray. And if you happen to jump right in and paint without letting your background dry and you've got a little bit of green into it, just take a paper towel um, and wipe off the color you don't want and then reapply the appropriate color. And on another note, um, I do try to keep these demos at about 30 to 40 minutes. You do not have to paint as fast as I am painting. Um, just because I'm trying to keep the demos kind of short, given um, the internet and some of the tech issues that we've had in the past, I prefer the edited videos that I give you guys. I feel like that's just much more information than the demos. But the demos, these were started as kind of a reply when we had the first lockdown uh, a couple months ago and just kind of something to give me something to do, give you guys something to do at home. And it's continued and built a very, very nice uh, community. So we're keeping it going. And on Fridays, we do a premiere of one of the edited videos and then I'm available during the chat uh, to answer any questions. And I am very much enjoying that because then I get to focus more on your questions uh, rather than painting and filming and talking and answering questions like I'm doing right now. So. so basically, no matter what, just find your creative outlets because no matter what's going on in your world, they are very beneficial to have just to help balance your psyche and balance your life. All right, so trying to get to the last of this space filled in with that super light gray. And then we'll start putting our second layer of details on. And as you get into these final stages, and even after you get to what we call the underpainting, where there's no canvas space showing, I want you to get out of your chair, look at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away, and just start noticing what it looks like from that distance. This is the normal viewing distance for most things in life and especially artwork. And the more that you can kind of get into the groove of looking at your artwork from the vantage point that your viewer will be looking at it, 
and making adjustments as needed um, will only help improve your skills. All right, so getting that last bit filled in. I personally feel like my painting has not begun until I've gotten to the underpainting and all the canvas space is filled in. And it has more to do with that color theory fact that I was talking about earlier is because the color is going to look different with the white background and then when we go to put a second layer on here it's going to look different because now we have the bases of our shades of gray. All right and then even as I'm looking at it on the video um, that's where I can kind of see it from that distance and it's taking shape nicely but I do want to kind of change uh, the transition here so we're going to kind of go back to all the colors and I'll be moving down to more of the smaller pointy brush. All right and let's go back to this brush. This one I actually cut down to make it super pointy. All right so let's get the eye colors in here first while well, I just give that a little bit of a time to just kind of dry before we move into our brush strokes. So kind of where we have, this was a pretty dark eyed dog, but kind of where this entire black space is, that's actually his eye. So I'm going to change the color and then we'll put a black pupil on there. Um, so I want a brown eyed dog, but a little darker than that. So I'm taking some of that burnt sienna, little bit of black. Let me actually need thicker paint. Grab a little bit more. There we go. So not just quite going for the raw sienna direct by itself. Um, but just kind of toning it down with the black just a little bit. And as I do this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go right over that little white dot because that happens a lot when people do the eyes. So I'll go through the steps of reapplying the pupil and reapplying the catch light. So as you're making these tiny dots, put your pinky out. You can put it on the table kind of steady and use that as your pivot point or rest your forearm against the edge of the table. And remember, if you are inclined to hold your breath, to exhale, I'm going to make this a little thicker, um, exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas. And here you can see the fact that I am using student grade paint and the transparency of the paint. And don't freak out while our dog looks like a little bit of a zombie dog for a couple of minutes. All right, so I'm going to give that a little time to dry while we work on the fur. And our crazy zombie dog, like I said, don't freak out too much. Okay, and then as we move into the fur, we're going to start again with our dark spaces and work our way towards our light spaces. So I'm actually going to have to make a little bit more of this. And again, as we do this, we're going to do light pressure more white coming in there we go so not quite starting with that darkest gray but the next layer next gray down and I'm gonna go ahead and make a decent amount all right so as we're doing this kind of use just the tip of the brush we're gonna treat it like a pencil and you can see that I am starting to kind of curl um, or uh, give a little bit of flair to these brush strokes and you are thinking that each brush stroke is a strand of fur on your dog and again every two or three brush strokes grab more paint because you're going to get in this groove of making these kind of fun little loopy brush strokes but you won't actually be applying paint So every two or three brush strokes, grab more paint. And I am overlapping this color on top of uh, some of the lighter grays. And then we'll be coming in with the lighter grays and overlapping it on here. With a lot of our fluffy dogs, um, you have to give it three or four layers. Um, and that just helps kind of build up the fluff. And again, thinking that each strand, each brush stroke is a strand of fur um, and laying in your darks and then going in and laying your light colors and then maybe your mid-tones. It's kind of a, a back and forth action or back and forth process. 
add a touch of water to the paint that helps a little bit with fluidity. And again, you can even just kind of see by as we start defining the second layer a little bit more, how it starts to take shape a little bit more 3D. And again, just kind of notice the direction um, that sometimes I change for the brush strokes. Here we were going more down as we're on the head, you know, these kind of radiate out from the center of the head. And then even the ears, they go in a different direction again. So if you enjoyed painting this puppy, or I've got a, quite a few others as the demos, um, I do want you to check out my Paint Your Pet course on my online school and you'll be painting from your own photograph and you'll be learning about the value scale. Very, very similar to what we went through um, today. And when you paint something that you love, your own pet, you actually put a little more energy and effort into it. And then when you kind of impress yourself with what you created, um, you're that much more likely to give it a try again. So check it out. I've taught that class for probably eight years, pretty exclusively now. Um, the studio classes are closed given current circumstances, but um, the online version of the class has been very, very successful. I'm very impressed with the pictures um, of what people are sending me, what they're painting at home. And on the website, there is a, what they call it, what I call an ultimate kit to where you'll purchase that, email me your photo of your pet. The kit will be prepped specific to your pet colors and background color choice and all your supplies will be mailed to you and then the ultimate kit also includes a code for 30-day access to the course appropriate for your pet color all right still and this whole time i've been with that same shade of gray we're going to move down in a moment All right, so let's see, I see a question jump up. How many values of gray are used in this picture? Um, and you're finding a lot of photos that there's three values of a hue, okay. Um, so in the way that I teach, I try to get you guys to recognize at least three values. Um, our shadow value, which would be this, uh, the darker gray that we're adding, our mid-tone, which is gonna be what we're gonna work on next and that light, light gray and then our highlights going to be the pure white so if you can look at something and see three shades you can create a 3d um, kind of image of that object with using three shades as you get more and more into painting and want to go a little bit more realistic then you'll start getting into looking at you know this is a pretty big jump from the darker shade to the light shade there's actually two shades that would be in between that so you'd start recognizing more. And for the value scale, you can have up to, I think, 12 different shades of gray, very, very subtle transitions. In today's painting, I probably will have about four shades of gray to where we'll have uh, four or five, pure black, dark gray, medium gray, medium light gray, light gray, and then pure white that we'll be adding. So um, I know that was kind of long-winded for that, hopefully that um, answered the question. All right, so same thing. This isn't going to be a huge contrast, but I'm using some of this color to overlap the areas that we just placed the darker shades. And then I'm going to reload my white and go in pretty heavy handed with the pure white. So again, just basically going over where we were um, putting the medium gray a moment ago and using some of this lighter color, lighter gray to help the transition of the overlapping. Oh, 
oh, and then we got to get these little fuzzies coming off his head. He is quite a fluffy little dog. Yeah, makes a lot more of that. And again, like I said in the background, if you have to mix your shades two or three times, you're just getting great practice. So don't stress out or freak out if that's what you have to do for yours. And again, as I'm doing the fluff that overlaps the background color, every two or three brush strokes, grab more paint. So that way you are applying it a little bit thicker to compensate for a lighter color going on top of a slightly darker color for that background. And if you're noticing a little bit of brush maintenance, if you're noticing that your strokes just keep getting bigger and bigger, wider and wider, take a look at your brush, and it's kind of happening to mine right now. Do you have a lot of buildup on the, where the metal part and the bristles meet? And if you have a lot of buildup, that means it's just pushing your bristles apart. So you can kind of clean that excess paint off. That brings your bristles back together, and then grab more paint with just the tip of the brush. And again, because I use the Sharpie marker um, for the traceable on mine, I'm just trying to make sure I can get all those lines covered. And then same on the paws, overlap all that fluffy hair. Oh, nice. Good, Jan. I'm glad that helped. And I'm glad that you're looking at um, other tutorials, too, and noticing similar uh, concepts. That's awesome. That is only going to help you build your skills. Um, and with that being said, I encourage all of you to um, take courses and try different um, um, art instructors, because each person has a different way of, an ex of explaining it, and they may explain the exact same thing that I talk about, um, but it makes more sense either hearing it the second time or hearing it the way that they describe it or vice versa. You may take another class and not quite fully get what somebody else talks about, but I talk about the same thing and explain it just in words that you understand or that makes sense to you. So no matter what in life, um, get your information and your from multiple sources. It just helps your knowledge, the more variety of sources that you can get your information from. Okay, I am so ready for the pure white. Okay, and those eyes are almost dry. We'll do the white, and I'm going to reload the white. And I'm going to clean the brush. That way I'm kind of starting fresh. And again, because I'm using student grade paint, I'm going to be very generous with the white because the white is rather transparent for this particular brand of paint. All right. And again, this would be considered our highlight value. Since we were talking about our values, this would be our lightest. And I'll go through the values again. I'll point them all out when we are done. Um, will be at four or five. And again, as you see the places that I add this, just kind of mimic that to the best of your ability on your canvas. But you, if you are inclined, if your instincts are going, hey, put it right here, trust that. Um, your instincts are pushing you where you need to go. And the more that you can learn to kind of listen to them and trust that, Again, the more you're going to enjoy your own creative process. And the other fun thing is, is with so many paintings, 
um, because you are building so many layers and you're changing this flat white surface into this kind of 3D object. Um, a lot of times the paintings kind of come together in the last 10% of your efforts. And that's usually when we get into adding this pure white or your really intense highlight. So again, just kind of try to get lost in the process of painting and don't get too hung up on um, anything being perfect at any moment in the process. And again, as I'm adding this white, they're just tiny little dash marks. They are overlapping other colors. And then the places where I need it really thick um, or you know, more intense white, then I'll overlap the brush strokes more and create a larger space. And if you guys have suggestions for what you want, I do have a rather long list. I'm trying to get through all of it. Um, for the demos, but let me know and I will definitely get it on the list um, and get those out there. I want to keep you guys painting and I am also working on more um, advanced beginner classes, more uh, George O'Keefe, that has definitely been a big request, so do more of that, some Picasso, um, Klimt, more Van Gogh and Monet, and just trying to get a lot of more, blah, that was a great sentence, get a lot more of the um, old master paintings in there and a bit more of the iconic ones too. So if you know of any teachers, educators, parents, homeschoolers, um, especially given current circumstances that need art classes for their kids, um, please send them to this channel, send them to my Paint with Love Joy website, uh, they are more than welcome to use anything on my YouTube channel for free um, and in their classrooms. I just ask that you send me a picture of everybody's uh, final creations so I can post those on social media. And on my Paint with Lovejoy channel, I have an educator's bundle that for a monthly fee, and again, that fee just helps uh, continue to promote and produce more of these videos. Um, but the Educators Bundle has all the traceables, some of the collections of videos, a master video list to make it a little bit more organized to find the traceable, the colors, and the video. Um, but please share that with anybody that you know in that field. I did create this channel as a reply to being cut out of schools so extensively, because um, I do feel like the arts are very important in human development no matter what your age. All right, yes, uh, Space Galaxies. Um, I think I have one of those up there. Um, I do have a Galaxy demo out there. I saw a few people send me pictures. That was from the very early demos, um, but I'll add another one. And then same with Northern Lights. Uh, I've had another request for that one, so those will go on the list. Okay, so we do need to go back to the eyes and then we'll be bringing this painting to a conclusion. This little fluffy dog. And at home, literally, you can go back and forth between all these shades. You could go back in with that dark gray, the medium gray again, and then back in with the white. So if you're inclined to do that on yours, go right ahead. There is no limit to how many times you can layer acrylic paint. And if you're really not sure, you can layer it a lot. Um, go down and check out my portfolio link, the Lovejoy Creations one. And I paint with a palette knife and acrylic paint. And my paintings have over 100 layers of acrylic paint scraped on them. So you literally can layer this as much as you want. Okay, let's get those eyes. So I'm going to go back to my super, super pointy brush. If you're still using the same brush that you were using a moment ago, just clean it out. And you want to use just the tip of the brush. So we're going to black paint. Um, 
Oh, I haven't done any Thomas Kincaid. I will add that to the list. Um, so those might be a little more structured. I might have to simplify a few of them um, given for first time painters, but I'll add it to the list. Good suggestion. All right, so as we do this, I'm going in with black paint. We're literally just putting a circle um, on the inside of the eyeball. He's still gonna look like deer in the headlights right now. And then we will go back and add um, the white catch light. All right, and again, remember to breathe as you're doing this part. If this is too difficult or and you're, um, your brush is either too wide or you can't get the right pressure, you could swap out and use a toothpick or a paper clip um, to make some of these small lines. And you might do a bit more of the dots um, to kind of create your line. So now I'm just kind of re-going over the eyeliner, again, keeping light pressure. And on this one, you can see that my pinky is out towards the right. I'm using that as my kind of steady pivot point. And it helps actually when I talk, because then that means I'm breathing. Oh, let's get those. We're going to do the nose. Outline that real quick. All right, and then clean that brush really good. Nice, flowers and fruit still lives. Good suggestion. You guys, I love it. We just keep adding like 10 more to the list. I love it. Um, so we do have a few flowers and I do have one fruit still life in the demo um, to tide you over until I can make some more. Okay, now, like I said, clean the brush really good. We're gonna go for pure white paint. We are gonna reapply that little catch light dot. Um, and again, you can wait for your black to dry before you do this. I will not just because we are concluding the video. But what you want to do is hold your brush kind of perpendicular to the canvas. We're going to touch it and pull the brush right back. And you want to make sure this dot goes in the exact same spot on both eyes. Oops, and I made one a little too big. So let's just adjust the smaller one. There we go. All right. So cute little dog. Um, like I said, feel free, add more fluff. I'd actually think it would look cool if we went back with a little bit more pure white right there. Let's do that. Um, please email me any of your photos, photos of your paintings of what you do. Email them, paint with lovejoy and then tag Paint with Lovejoy on any of your social media outlets that you are posting your photos to. And do share this with your, the community. Um, when you guys share your photos or when I put your photos on social media, um, it gives other people that are scared to paint um, enough courage and sometimes just enough of a push that they need to give it a try. So please share your fun things with your community members. All right, Oop. do one little highlight on the nose real quick. There we go. And I think that brings us into the conclusion for today. So great uh, questions today. Um, excellent, excellent suggestions for the future subject matters. So thank you so much. Um, and again, Victoria, thank you so much for the donation to Paint with Lovejoy. I really, really appreciate it. So I believe next week we have, if I completely forgot a pelican and I forgot what's on Sunday, um, but I will see everybody on Friday for the premiere and on Mondays and Wednesdays, it's not a premiere, but the doodles are released. So they will help you with your uh, drawing, beginning drawing skills and getting comfortable with the pressure of the brush. So check those out. So I hope everybody has a great Sunday and I will see you all next week. Cheers.